Well, hello everyone. Welcome to episode number 208, where I want to talk to you about losing weight from a place of love and not hate. So tell me something. Can you relate to finding yourself swinging from one extreme to the other? Here's what I mean. On one side of the equation is restricting food. It's being hard on yourself. It's feeling like you're constantly broken in the area of your weight in your body. And so you take extreme measures like shots or pills or not eating to lose weight. And then on the other side is this feeling like you should be able to eat whatever you want and thinking and worrying about your weight and how you look is superficial, it's silly, it's not important. Can you relate to swinging from one extreme with food to the other? So what I find with my clients is that neither extremes make people very happy. Restriction, on one hand, feels terrible, and over-consuming and not caring feels bad too. And both have the physical negative consequences of overeating or over-consuming food, as well as the emotional and mental consequences of thinking about food all the time or having this negative self-talk and feeling like you're broken. So what I've learned is that both coming from restriction and coming from overabundance and not caring were both ways of me not liking myself very much. Restriction came from me feeling like there was something wrong with me and my body that really needed fixing. And over-consuming food came from not caring about myself and my body and what I was doing to my body. And that made me feel like I didn't care about myself. And that didn't feel great either. So when I started to learn from the naturally thin, what I began seeing is that how they turn to food. One of the things that was so cool that I started to pay attention to and that I felt so inspired by was how they spoke about themselves and about eating, about the food that they wanted to put into their body and how they related to themselves at meals. I started to see the difference between how I was thinking and relating to food and how they or thinking and what their inner dialogue was. And it wasn't mean. It wasn't all consuming about food. They didn't think about food all day long. They liked food, but it was placed in this normal context, this healthy container where there wasn't this over desire attached to food. And I realized then, and I continue to remind myself today that my desire for food comes from thinking that food is going to make me feel better, going to make me happy, that my dopamine hit that I get from food allows me to check out and not feel my feelings. And somehow that is better than feeling my feelings. So when I decided that losing weight was no longer going to come from a place that I was broken but rather a place of how amazing and incredible I am, that I deserve to have the life and the joys and the health of my life and all the wonderful experiences in life that I was isolating myself from and using my body as a barrier to having an amazing life. I could finally stop using food as my main joy in my life and instead start putting food in its place. So can you relate feeling broken because of your weight and thinking that food will make you happy? This is a thought error. Food does not make us happy. Yes, it can give us that temporary dopamine hit that feels good temporarily. But our thoughts about a particular food and how we attach it to food is what's creating that happiness or creating the joy or creating the nurturing or the numbing out. That's just a programmed response that we do over and over and over. And that's a thought error. It's a thought error to think that food is gonna make us happy because when we're done eating, we're left with the feeling that we wanted to avoid. 
we're left with the discomfort that we were feeling beforehand. Food doesn't take away the pain or the frustrations or the sadness. It only temporarily for a few minutes might do that. So food doesn't make us happy. Our thoughts, our feelings, how we're showing up and how we're programming our brain to think about our lives, that's what makes us happy. That is programmable and it's reprogrammable. And so is the attachment that you might be using to connect food to your body, food to your numbing out, food to wanting to make you happy. That is a program response that can be unprogrammed and reprogrammed so that food just becomes food. So what if food was just food for you to enjoy when you're hungry? What if food was there to taste good? but also to there to support your health and your energy. And what if you found different ways to have joy throughout the day with wonderful experiences in your life that fulfill you? That yes, of course, food can be enjoyed and and have tastes and textures that you enjoy. But what if it's also used as your fuel to keep your body running optimally? By making some of these tiny tweaks, you go from being an emotional eater to really using food to help support you to have the body, the health, the vibrancy that you want. What if you could come to slimming down and eating from a place of loving yourself, not from self-ridicule, not looking at the cellulite, not looking at the parts of you that you're wrong, not telling yourself, oh my goodness, how could I let myself go like this? What if you came to slimming down with compassion and love and understanding of why this weight has popped onto your body and being hopeful again and caring about yourself again, about who you are and finding other joys and ways to fill up your life that matter, that give you joy, that give you pleasure? What about practicing new ways to fulfill your heart, to fulfill yourself, to fulfill your body so that you feel whole? and amazing and incredible instead of spending time thinking that you're broken, that there's something wrong with you, that your weight is holding you back from living. How would that change your life and your relationship with food and your weight? Do you see that by coming from an abundant and loving place, you can change your weight? That it doesn't have to come from hate? and shame and self-ridicule, that often that never works long-term. Because if you don't get to the source of the shame and the hate and the self-ridicule, and you start finding love and abundance and joy and possibility for your weight, your health, your life, it's such a better place for long-term weight loss to occur. There are other pleasures in your life that are screaming out for your attention. What are they? Have you found them? Are you looking for them and reaching for them and spending your days trying to find those other pleasures that are healthy, that are safe, that are good for you? If weight wasn't an issue at all in your life, what would you be spending your time doing? What would you be spending your time creating? What would you be spending your time enjoying and loving? What would you get your head wrapped up in and your heart wrapped up in? Those are the questions I want you to be asking yourself. If weight wasn't an issue for me, what are the pleasures? What are the joys? What are the hobbies? What are the things that I would be doing? And how can I be doing them right now? How do I want to think and feel about myself and my body right now? And what actions align with those feelings? And there are there adjustments or changes you'd like to make to be this version of yourself now? Do you see that your questions create a different relationship with food, with your life, with joy, with abundance? with loving yourself. 
So what if you could lose weight from a place of love and stop hating yourself, stop harping on yourself, stop telling yourself you're broken and there's something wrong with your body and start asking yourself these three questions. How do I want to think and feel about myself and my body now? Number two, what actions align with this feeling now that I could take on today? And number three, are there any adjustments or changes I'd like to make to be this version of myself now? Start asking better questions and you will get better results for your weight and your body. Stop asking yourself questions that only come from hate, that only come from dissatisfaction, that come from a lack place instead of an abundant, loving, kind place. I don't want you spending your days hating your body, telling yourself you're broken, and coming from actions that then redefine you being broken and you not loving yourself. It's not okay. The time is to change. The time is to use this year right now to come from a healthier minded, loving place, supporting yourself and supporting your body. And from there, you ask better questions. You can take better actions. You can support yourself in a better way. Because when I decided to lose weight from a place of loving myself and being kind to myself, then the actions, the thoughts, the feelings started to bubble up of like, what am I not saying to myself? What am I avoiding in terms of love and caring for myself that I've been avoiding and not allowing myself to experience because I don't like my weight, because I don't like who I am, because I don't feel like I deserve to go and have the life I want to have because of my weight. When I stopped holding back, I could start coming from an abundant place, a loving place. And I started asking better questions, questions with the underpinning that I deserve to have the life and the joys and the health of my life, no matter my weight and experience the life that I was waiting to experience. And I was doing it by isolating from living because I was using my body as this barrier to having an amazing life. I don't want you to use your weight as a barrier to having anything. Start now. Start using food as a means to take care of your body, fill you up and give you energy, and use joy and better questioning in your mind and how you think about yourself to support you, to create the body and the health and the life you want. So much more fun. So much more joy gets to come out of that and such better results from your body from your mind, from your life. To lose weight from pain and hate and shame are never fun ways to lose weight. But to lose weight from possibility and openness and joy and feeling whole and incredible, now that's a different way to lose weight. That's a powerful way. But there's still time to join us for the 30-day challenge where you have the opportunity to spend time practicing and slimming down, coming from love, coming from self-respect, coming from being in harmony with food instead of opposition with food, coming from a place of love to lose weight versus criticism, coming from compassion and curiosity over tension, over hate, over pain, over a critical voice and critical mind. And losing weight from calm over tension and stress. So if you have not had a chance to sign up for the 30-day challenge, we are just in the first week and there's still time. And I would love to have you join. All you have to do is go to thin, T-H-I-N, within, W-I-T-H-I-N dot com. So my website, thin, within dot com forward slash 30 days. So it's the number 30, no spaces, and then days. So thinwithin.com forward slash 30 days. I would love to have you. 
I would love to show you a different way and have you start to practice with other amazing women who I'm already seeing care for each other. I'm already seeing them say that they will not give up on themselves and they will complete the challenge, whether it looks ugly, whether it looks imperfect, that is perfect. We come to the challenge knowing that it's not going to look perfect and there's no expectation that it should. Because in the area where you struggle, it's about growth. It's about self-respect. It's about learning. And it's not about perfection and criticism and being self-ridiculing. So I invite you to lose weight in the most loving, cared for, supportive way that I know. You can join us at thinwithin.com for slash 30 days. Get registered, get registered soon because we are on our first week and I want you there. All right, everybody, I want you to start asking yourself these questions. How do I want to think and feel about myself and my body now? What actions align with this feeling that I can take today? And are there any adjustments or changes that I'd like to make to be this version of myself now? These are powerful questions, so spend a few moments answering them and then jump on over to thinwithin.com forward slash 30 days to register for the 30 day challenge. All right, everybody, you can lose weight from a place of love, not hate. So start doing that today.